Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Dean Genie. This is the UTV show. I'm joined by a special guest today. Uh, no, it's not Andy, who normally does the podcast with me. I'm joined by Max from Villa on Tour. Hello, Max. Hello, how are you doing? Yeah, all good. Thank you very much, mate. Um, so, I'd lo- thank you very much for joining me today. I know it's really random because, uh, you know, me and you are not particularly big YouTubers or anything like that, but it's nice to do a collaboration uh, for like, small YouTubers like ourselves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah so, uh, yeah. So, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about your channel. I'm probably going to put the clip over this in the post edit or post production side of things of that snobgrass goal you managed to capture the other week. Well, I've got, I've got to be honest. That wasn't actually me. I got my uh, mate to do that video, but it just is really, really good footage. It's crappy yeah, but... footage, but you should take the credit for it. It's on your YouTube channel. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that, you know, is. If you haven't seen Villa on Tour, I'll leave a link in the description anyway. It's a cracking channel. Um, I, was, I was familiar with them uh, a few weeks ago when I started doing Villa vlogs myself. Uh, but this guy, Max, does a cracking job of the editing and uh, you know he really does actually capture the magic of uh, match days. Um, and it's a cracking channel. Link's in the description. Uh, go that way if you're watching this video. Subscribe to him. Um, you know He uploads regularly in terms of uh, Villa matches. Are you a season ticket holder? I am, yeah, lower hole, so I like that, it's all good. Yeah, I was beh- I'm, I'm pretty, I was, I'm 95% certain I was behind your mate in the whole tent <laughs> last week, yeah. uh, and I wanted to say hello to him, but I wasn't 100% sure until I actually looked at your videos, and I was just like, yeah, that was definitely him, because I was yeah. right up in the upper hole last week. So, yeah. uh, but anyway, go on to, uh, so we'll talk a little bit about your YouTube channel first. Um, mm. When did you decide to get that up and running? Um, it was quite early on in the season, around September. I just, I just had a small idea that I just wanted to film a game, and the first game I actually did was Barnsley away, which was a really good way to start my channel, which was a three-nil win. And I didn't, I didn't put my face on the channel too much then. I just kind of, just wanted to get the footage of the game so I could look back in future months to come and just look back at the games that we've experienced. And it's, it's gone quite well at the moment. Uh, Some of the games are better than others, but it doesn't really matter, does it? It's all about the experience and trying to look back at that in future months. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, you've really started to gain a bit of recognition. I mean, when I think I first subscribed, you had about 100 or so subscribers. You've now gone up to over 500, and it it seems like in a matter of minutes. So it really has uh, gained quite an audience. Um, I mean... What's your general feedback from your subscribers and uh, people that are tuning in? Uh, you know, are they a big fan of yours? Um, you know, are they regular viewers? Yeah, t- towards the start, it was kind of just, you know, I just like it was just my friends that used to watch it. But as the season's gone on, more and more people have started to watch my videos, which I, I just can't really believe, to be honest. It's just weird that YouTubers allowed me to share it to other Villa fans and yeah all the, all the feedback I get on, in the comment section on my videos is really good so I'm enjoying it at the moment yeah yeah I'm enjoying watching it so keep up the good work um, thank you very much enjoy it. I, I, as soon as uh, a Villa game uh, has come and gone I've generally gone to YouTube and wait for that uh, notification to say that you, you've uploaded uh, because uh, you know, like I said videos are absolutely cracking so keep up the good work Max thank you very much so uh, let's talk business then so we're here to obviously discuss all things Aston Villa. Yeah. Um, I want you to sum up how you think the season's gone so far. It's been, it's been a bit up and down, hasn't it, really? Uh, first few games, it really wasn't going for us. I mean, we were bottom of the league, I think, or 23rd at some point. Um, that Especially that Reading away game, I remember, just it just wasn't looking good for us. In, an, in a season that we really need to get promoted, like f- for financial reasons, it just wasn't looking good. But we picked up, didn't we? Um, towards September, that time, it was it was picking up. And especially in this, it, December in particular wasn't great. 
a few iffy games in there, but especially the end of December, the uh, win at Middlesbrough was the defining part of the season so far for me, that win. Away. Yeah, that was the turning point because I think a lot of us expected us to go to the Riverside and get turned over because Middlesbrough are, even though they're not really in the playoffs or in the promotion race at the minute, they're a solid side. Yeah, and, to, and especially with their new manager, that was Tony Pulis' first game. Yeah, and he's you know he's a very experienced manager. He's, he did a really good job at Stoke. I, I think he's fell by the wayside a little bit since leaving Stoke. I don't, yeah. you know, he stayed at the Baggies for about three three years, I think it was. Yeah, um, and you know, well, you've seen the Baggies now; they're not doing too well, which is great for us anyway. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I agree to an extent. Um, I think, yeah, the, the start of the season wasn't great. I mean, the, we had high hopes because we signed the likes of John Terry and that's a big marquee signing for us. That's a statement of intent as well, if you, if, you know, some might say. Um, but I think injuries have set us back a little bit because in terms of our striking options, I mean, Hogan wasn't particularly hitting the ground running at all. Codders has been injured all season. What do you think to Keenan Davis? I like him. I remember... It was that Norwich game uh, back in, when was it, August? And I remember looking at the team sheet and just thinking, I'm excited now to see what this kid can do. And that game, he absolutely bullied that Norwich defence. And he's he's come in and he had a lot of pressure on him because, as he said, Hogan wasn't firing, Kodger was injured. So he, he was our leading striker and the one we had to rely on. And he did put in a shift. Although he's not prolific, he brings other players into the game. And that's that's what we can ask of him as, as well. He's not... He's not very experienced, he's only 19, I think, so when he's come in, he's done a really good job for us. Yeah, I think, I have mixed views on Keenan Davis. He's, he's, he is a, a good target man. Um, when we've been playing him in the starting eleven, I mean, you noticed that Adoma was on fire. He was banging goals left, right and centre. Yeah. Uh, but since we've taken him off, Adoma's gone quiet, in my yeah. opinion. But the thing is as well, I think, Especially in the championship, you can have a target man that can hold up the, the play really well and bring others into it. For me, you, you do need that striker as well, which will bag you 20 goals, 30 goals a season. And we have been relying, I feel we've been relying up too much on our wingers yeah. um, for the goals, when really we, we do need that striker. And I, I guess that's probably why he's brought in Lewis Grabbing, because he has been scoring quite a lot for uh, Sunderland, I believe. Yeah, but, you, could, you could say. Keenan Davis is inexperienced, so getting 20 goals a season for him wasn't likely, and we were a bit hard done by in terms of injuries. But it's the way he brings in other players. Like Adoma's form, I wouldn't say it was solely down to Keenan Davis, mm -hmm. but it's, I don't know, it's just, I do have mixed views as well, but for, for his age, I think he has done really well for us, to be honest. Would he, be, would he play better with another striker? So, like having Scott Hogan run off him? Yeah, I was thinking you could play, well, a few months ago I was thinking you could play Davis and Hogan together, like Davis, the big man, winning the headers with Hogan running off him. But no, I think I think Keenan Davis is a sole striker and a, like you can knock it on to those attacking midfielders like Grealish and running on, uh, and bring other players into the game, yeah. OK, so going on to, I mean, like I could ask you all night about every single individual player, uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, um, a couple of the, a couple of players to mention. I mean, Snodgrass has had a really good m couple of months. Uh, mm. It was quite before that. Um, Adoma was firing on all cylinders at the start of the season. Um, we could go on all all evening about the players, but what what is your thoughts on our manager Steve Bruce? I like him. Uh, you know, when Dimitrio last year wasn't doing the business, to be honest, he was getting those late late goals that we conceded under Di Matteo, you know, we weren't going to get promoted when we were playing like that. So I think once once we sacked, uh, uh, we sacked Di Matteo, I think he was the best option to bring in because you, look, you just have to look at his track record and that's what he's all about, getting teams from the Championship into the Premier League. And I think this year he's done really well with the squad that we've got. and He's, he's brought I stability, think, hasn't he? Yeah, I think he's the best man for the job to get us into the Premier League. What about if we? What about hypothetically, uh, in a few months' time, we get promoted, whether it be by playoffs or automatic promotion? Is Steve Bruce our man for the future in the Premier League? That's a, that's the question, isn't it? I mean, he hasn't done too well in the Premier League. I mean, he got Hull City to a FA Cup final, which is good, but yeah. 
he hasn't he hasn't pushed teams on to that next level in the Premier League. But you can't sack a manager from getting us promoted. Do you know what I mean? We've got to we've got to stick with him it's and see what stopped, he can do. Uh, it hasn't stopped Watford. Yeah, Watford yeah, got promoted and then their manager went straight away, didn't they? Yeah, true, but. I still don't believe you can sack a manager after he just got your club promoted, but we'll, we'll see. We have to get there first. We do have to get there first. And like I said, hypothetical question. There's a long yeah. way to go, even though we're in, we're, we're stand, we stand in good stead at the minute. Uh, mm. Still a long way to go. Uh, there's still tricky results out there for us in the next uh, few games. Um, but I, I, my personal opinion, really, I think, yes, I think for a season, maybe max two, if we're in the Premier League. Again, this is all hypothetical. <laughs> I, yeah. I personally believe, I mean, Dr. Tony Jao, when he took over um, Aston Villa, he said that in five years' time, he wanted Villa ch- a challenging for the Champions League. Yeah. You can't, um, you can't put Steve Bruce in the, and the Champions League in the same sentence, really, can true. you? True. I think, I think we give him a year or so. Like, if he, if he, if he keeps us safe... Um, I think he's done a good job and if Dr Tony isn't feeling it with Steve Bruce after that we could get a more Premier League proven manager to push us to that next level who would that be then? that's a hard question it is a hard I question t- <laughs> I'll put you on I the spot now yeah I think with the group of players we're going to have going into the Premier League it's all going to change no matter what happens at the end of the season it's all going to change whether we stay in the Championship or go up to the Premier League but yeah it's hard to say at the moment isn't it I'm not too sure well, if if he puts his money where his mouth is, get someone like Carlo Ancelotti. In. <laughs> Oof, that's a big shout. <laughs> well, I mean, look at Rafa Benitez. I mean, he won the Champions League with Liverpool. True. Um, you know, he's you know he, he, he's been at Real Madrid. He's you know he won the league, I believe, with Valencia. And look where he is now. He's at Newcastle. So yeah. so it's you know it's not a million miles off if you exactly. put, it that, put it that way. So it's all it's all possible. It's all possible. That's it. Um, so the chairman then, since he's taken over, I mean, how long have you been following, uh, following Villa for? Um, I'm only 16, so I think my first game was in 2011. So I haven't had the best experience supporting Villa. It's all gone a bit downhill since I started supporting them. So. You would have joined us then, so you would have been the McLeish era? Yeah, I think my first game was in the 11-12 season, so yeah, McLeish probably. Oh dear, that's not really a good start to uh, no. being a Villa fan. <laughs> um, exactly. What's I mean, like, I suppose being at a young age, you probably, like a younger age than 16, I guess you won't be bothered about what goes on behind the scenes at Villa. Uh, but uh, obviously I've known, I'll, you know, I'm, I'm you know, nearly 30 years old. I've been a Villa fan now for the best part of 25, 26 years. Um, Randy Lerner, you know, he did a job for us until he just lost interest with the club and then obviously he sold up to uh, the dock. Um, yeah. What's what's your opinion on the dock over the past two years? I mean, like in terms of like being behind the managers and obviously, um, like I, I guess giving us a little bit of a war chest. Yeah, I really really like him. I'm, I don't think in the term in terms of football itself, I don't think we've really seen an Owen owner like him. He's really involved with the whole of the club and on Twitter as well. As well, he's a bit of a magician, isn't he? I mean, I love his tweets, especially the ones during the transfer window. But I just think. He's really involved in the club and you can see that he, he loves this club and he wants this club to do well. Something I certainly haven't seen with Randy Lerner in particular. Because Randy Lerner just lost interest really, didn't he? And I don't see that happening with Dr Tony. Yeah, I agree. I think, um, yeah, Randy Lerner in the last two of... Well, it was when McLeish left and he brought in Lambert. Um, that's where he turned around to Lambert and said, we need to, I need to tighten, um, yeah, tighten the purse strings a little bit. Uh, hence why the likes of Hutter and Shea Given and Zogby at the time were put in the uh, the bomb squad, so to speak. Um, with Dr Tony Zhao, I think... He, my, 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 I, I don't know whether you agree with me or not. He's very inexperienced. He's well behind yeah. the club. But mm. the first season in charge where he literally just splashed out £75 million. We actually spent more money than Real Madrid at one point in the transfer window. Yeah. There's not an awful lot to show for it. Yeah, you could say that, but that squad we got relegated with really did need an overhaul. Like every single player in that squad needed to go in my opinion with a with a few exceptions. But you know, he, he is he is inexperienced. He's still quite young in terms of a football club owner, but yeah. the only way is up to be honest, and I think he's doing a really good job so far. Okay. 
appreciate your opinion. So, um, who would you say has been the standout player this season? Um, as the season as a whole, oh, you got to say Sam Johnston in goal. He's been absolutely fantastic. He's, he's, I wouldn't say he's won certain games for us, but he certainly kept us in the game, especially that one in, uh, against Millwall last in, in December, actually. Millwall should have won that game, hands down, um, and he saved us in that game. And he's just... From when he came in January uh, last year, he wasn't he wasn't great back then. He looked he looked nervous, and you yeah. can see he's he's only he's only become stronger as a person and as a as a footballer, and he's he's really done well for us this season. I, I agree, and I'm actually really glad that you said someone like Sam Johnson because I can I can imagine quite a few Villa fans would turn around and say, oh, it's Robert Snodgrass or it's Albert Adoma. But in terms of consistency, I, I agree. I do think Sam Johnston has been. A rock for us. I don't think we've had a keeper like him for some time. I mean, uh, you know, given when we before well before when we had Shane Given, I guess uh, you know he was very inconsistent. Guzan was very inconsistent. With Sam Johnson between the sticks, he does show a lot more consistency than previous goalkeepers we've had. So I'm glad you said that. But I'd also say someone like Alan Hutton is up there because yeah. he's an unsung hero at times. I think a lot of there's some there's that there is that minority of Villa fans that will slate Alan Hutton and I think that's down to his age and he's not yes. as he's not as attack minded as most fullbacks are in the modern game. What's yeah, your thoughts on Alan Hutton and him not getting a contract at the end of the season? Uh, it's a difficult one isn't it? Especially especially playing at left back as well. He's put in a really good shift because especially at right back last year and the year we got relegated he looked really dodgy but he's, he's come in and he's done a job at left back and if you did that at right back, people will be impressed. But especially doing it at left back as well on his weaker side, he's really yeah. done well, and he's pushed Neil Taylor, a really experienced left back, out of the squad. And I'm, I am a little bit disappointed with him not getting a new contract. But it depends where we are. If we go up to the Premier League, I don't think he's Premier League quality. But no, it's not. Uh, no, and, and and that's what concerns me, I guess, uh, towards the end of the season. And again, uh, that word hypothetical comes into play here. Um, I, I don't think a lot of our players that are in the current squad would make it out, make it in the Premier League. Yeah, I think I think there's going to be another big job for Steve Bruce to actually be competitive yeah. in the transfer market, I guess, and get some quality in for us to consolidate ourselves in the Prem. Hypothetically, again, um, but um, yeah, I, I agree. Sam Johnson, I would say, is probably our player of the season. I definitely agree with you there. Yeah. Okay then. So going on there towards the latter, latter stages now of this podcast uh, Sunday uh, I'm, I'm both excited and scared like no matter what form Blues are in or what form Villa are in it's always really scary isn't yeah. it? I mean, anything I, could happen I would love to have taken on Birmingham several weeks ago Yeah. not now they they seem they seem to have picked up a bit of form. They're out of the relegation zone now. And yeah. I, I can't remember the last time they actually lost. I think it was a, about five games ago, maybe six games ago. Yeah, they've won their last two, haven't they? Especially that game against Sheffield Wednesday. They they've won their last two away games. Don't quote me on that. That's, yeah. that's just a guess. But that game against Sheffield Wednesday, although they were dodgy goals that they scored. It's goals nonetheless, they, isn't it? Exactly. They've won away at Sheffield Wednesday, which is quite impressive. That's something that we can't do anyway. Well, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, so what's your predictions for Sunday? I've gone with a 2-0 win. Um, I think it's quite risky to say clean sheet because I I that kind of, I kind of can see them scoring, but I think if we get the first goal, the first goal is massive in this game. And I think if we get the first goal, the experience that we've got in our team will help us cement that and just control the game from then on. If we do get the first goal, I, I think, I think it's going to be. I definitely think it's going to be. My head, my head says it's going to be a draw. It's going to be nil nil or one one. Uh, but my heart. Based on obviously what's happened this week with Steve Bruce, uh, Steve Bruce's father passing away, whether it be Colin Calderwood or Steve Bruce in charge, uh, I, you know, I think John Terry is, is the man to really drive that team on and, and say we've got to do this for Steve Bruce today. So I think that you know there is that extra incentive for Villa to get that um, to get a win on Sunday, and I, I, I you know, it's, it's going to be a tough one, and I, I, and also it's going to be forty-two thousand people there. 
on yeah. uh, on Sunday, and I think because Villa Park hasn't been sold out to that capacity in about three years, I think it the, the the occasion may get to a couple of the players as well. That's why I think it's going to be quite cagey as well on it's Sunday. Tempt. It's only a positive that we've got people like Terry in our squad because he can help those players who haven't necessarily experienced a game like this before to, you know, just calm them down and just let them know it's just another game and we've got to get the win. Absolutely. Um, I think that's I think that's all the questions I've got uh, for you. Uh, I would just like to really thank you today, Max, for joining me on this podcast. No problem. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me on. Yeah, no problem at all. I'm sure we'll have one in a not too distant future uh, where we'll probably be talking about how. Villa have fucked it and we're, we're still in the championship for one season. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Let's hope not. Let's hope no, not. no, think positive thoughts. But um, <laughs> thank you, Max, from uh, Villa on Tour. Uh, again, you can see his YouTube channel in the link in the description. Uh, that calls an end to this podcast. Uh, please like, subscribe, drop a comment. Let me know what you think uh, the result's going to be this weekend. Uh, let me know your thoughts on Aston Villa too. And I will see you on the next video. Thank you very much and goodbye.